boys and girls, I just finished cutting out this fish. I did kind of half of the fish, and so when I cut it out, I'll unfold it. And it has to be a nice, chubby little fish. I'm going to put a little... I think I'll use this as a pattern for some colored fish. And put a little table clip here. And throw them on the floor. Maybe put different Bible verses on it. I think that'll be a good idea. And then with a paintbrush or a stick, tie some yarn to the stick or paintbrush. Use that as a fishing pole and have a magnet on the end. And they try to aim for the paper clip and pick it up. I think so. Everybody follows those directions and then they'll have fun. That's what I used to tell all my art students. My art kids, look, you don't have to be good in art. You don't have to be an artist, but if you follow my directions, you're going to be fine. Just do exactly what I told you to do. You'll be all right. So, there are things that we have to follow. Uh, like, um, I don't know if you've heard of peer pressure or not. You want to do what everybody else is doing. Um, it's not always a good thing. So you have to watch when you follow this. So we're going to find that. There is a group of men. I think we've talked about them before. Of course we've talked about them before. And Jesus said, hey, come on and follow me. That was a good following idea, right? When our parents tell us, hey, just do what I tell you to do. You'll be all right. We follow their lead, especially if you have parents that say, come on, yeah, come on, go to church with me. They're telling you that for your own good, okay? We're going to see where that is just what these men did, what Jesus wanted us to do and follow him. Think, yeah, that's the best person to follow right there, is follow the ways and the teachings of Jesus Christ, and we'll be all right. All right, all right today's lesson is winter lesson number six. Follow me, January 10th, 2020. I'm so glad to see you. And I know you can't see me, but we've had, had some technical difficulties, as they say. And you're in Miss Kathy's class. And I am still so glad to see you. Let's see. Today's lesson is from Luke, the fifth chapter, the first through the 11th verse. Remember, look at my earlier video. Uh, one of my first ones, look on YouTube and you'll see how to find the lesson scriptures, okay? Now, those of you who have been with me for a while, you know we're talking about Luke, one of the disciples. That's who it's named for. Then that's who was the writer. And so it is um, in the New Testament. That's right. That's right. Somebody's finishing my sentences out there now. The key verse is Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. How are you going to fish for people? But anyway, that's from Luke, the fifth chapter and the 10th section of 10th section, the 10th verse B part. That means we're going to the second part of that verse. But first, before we go any further, it is prayer time. I'm going to count to three. You stop the video, say your prayer, pray together if you're with somebody else, and then come back to me, okay? One, two, three, stop. All right, you're back with us, boys and girls. All right, every day you must talk to God. And it doesn't have to be just one time. Pray as many times as you need. And now let's go to our words to know. The first word is astonished. Astonished means surprised. The crowd was astonished by her magic tricks. And we know that many people were astonished, amazed, surprised to see some of the miracles that Jesus performed. The second word is cast, to throw or to toss, like to throw a fishing line out, cast your fishing line out to catch some fish. 
The sentence in this case is he cast a penny into the fountain at the mall. The next word is companion, one that often accompanies another. In French, your pet is called your animal, your companion animal, animal de compagnie. Did you know that? Well, that's because they accompany us in our sentences. My dog is my traveling companion who goes with me wherever I go. Let's see the next word. Oh, the next word is not a word, but several words. And there are names, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And those dates, well, this is how, this is sort of like the, um, the, start of how last names came became known because you know just like now there's more than one person named James and more than one person named John and in this case these were the sons of Zebedee maybe later on they would have called them John James Zebedee and John Zebedee or they were probably become named after uh where they were from instead of where they are so like uh Sometimes in English, the name Johnson or Stevenson came from the son of Stephen or the son of John. But anyway, these two brothers were Simon's fishing partners. Those two brothers who became two of Jesus' 12 disciples. Jesus called them the sons of thunder. The sentence goes, James and John were two of Jesus' closest friends. The next is Lake Genesaret, another name for the Sea of Galilee. The fishermen caught many fish at the Lake of Genesaret, thanks to Jesus. Oh, foretelling. We're going to see what that's all about, too. But right now, we're going to look at the source. Listen to the source. Luke, the fifth chapter, the first through the eleventh verses. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats and the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. While standing by the shore, be people gathered around Jesus to hear him speak. Two boats were on the beach. The fishermen were washing their nets. And of course, you had to wash the salt water and that kind of stuff out of the nets or they'd become brittle and they'd start breaking. So they had to keep those nets pretty neat. You get fish guts and stuff. Yuck. Jesus got into the boat that belonged to Simon Peter. He asked him to push away from the shore. Once away from the shore, Jesus sat and taught the crowd. 
if you can understand, he wanted, you know, the crowd to be on the shore. He's on the boat. Uh, they could hear him from the boat and uh, not be crowded out by the people. When Jesus finished, he said to Simon, push the boat deeper into the water and cast your nets there. You know that cast means to throw. You throw them out. They're still attached to the boat, but that's how they fished in large quantities back then. And some meant to some respect now as well. And they'd keep the nets there. The fish would come along and get trapped in them. And then uh, you could pull them on up. But let's see what happened. Master, Simon said, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. So they were up early in the morning. But if you say so, I will do it. So he's letting Jesus know that they were out there all night and still didn't catch anything. There are no fish to be caught. But if Jesus would say so, he was going to just do as Jesus said. So he cast the nets and caught so many fish that the nets were breaking. Then he called for help of another boat. Both boats were so full of fish that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell on his knees before Jesus saying, leave me, Lord, I am sinful. In other words, he realized how powerful, how mighty Jesus was to perform such a miracle where there were no fish. They had so many fish and he figured, I am not worthy enough to be around this man. He is truly the son of God. So he's like, oh Lord, I'm ashamed to be in front of you because I am so imperfect. And you know, we're all imperfect. Jesus loves us anyway. Everyone was amazed at their catch. Even Simon's partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Oh, what is Jesus talking about there? So they pulled up their boats on the beach, left everything behind, the boats, the nets, nets everything, and followed Jesus. Hmm. So they were not going to fish for fish anymore. The fish are in the water. The people are on land. Also, what that means is they were going to be taught by Jesus as his disciples. Because as you know, disciple means not just a follower, but a learner. A learner. They were going to learn from Jesus by his examples. We've seen some stories already from where, where they followed him and they saw many miracles and they learned how to do what Jesus was doing and they learned of his power and they learned how to be saved and to have everlasting life and to, yes, to teach others. So that was what they meant by fishing, what Jesus meant by fishing for people. So let's look at our questions. Jesus was where and doing what? Yes, he was by the lakeshore preparing to speak to the people. Who was there with him and working? Fishermen were washing their nets. We know who some of those guys were, don't we? What did Jesus ask for Simon to do? What did Jesus ask Simon to do? He wanted the boat deeper into the water so they could throw their nets out where he told them to throw their nets out. Why didn't Simon want to do it? Now he didn't want to do it, but he did it. He told them that they had worked all night and caught nothing. And that's why he didn't want to do it. But he would do it anyway because Jesus 
asked him to. So when they did as Jesus asked, what happened? Correct. They caught so many fish that the nets were breaking. They called for and called for help of another boat. Both boats were so full of fish that they began to sink. What did Jesus say that they would be fishers of? People. They were going to be fishers of people. And now we know what that means, right? All right. So that story from the Bible shows us that even though Simon was not quite sure, he did what Jesus said anyway. He followed what Jesus said and he was they were successful. This story for our contemporary story is follow the leader. Let's see what happens. Follow the leader. The contemporary story for January 10th, 2020. Jason and Jared were always helping their dad work in his wood shop. Dad was good at making all types of furniture. Jason and Jared. Today, I want to show you how to make a leg to Grandma's table. Follow everything I do. Both boys put on their safety glasses and Dad handed them a piece of wood and sandpaper. Dad, you're not going to use a machine to make these? No, you're going to follow me and learn how I learned from my dad and Grandpa. By hand. But that sounds like it's going to be hard. If you follow what I do exactly, then it won't be so difficult. Whatever Dad did, Jason and Jared imitated. And the more they sanded the wood, the easier it got. Dad, you're right. It's not that hard if we follow what you do. Jason and Jared were enjoying working with their father. They understood the importance of following directions because what they were making was important. What were Jason and Jared doing? They were helping their daddy at his workshop. The dad was showing them how to make a leg for grandma's table. What was dad teaching them differently in the wood shop today? Instead of using the machines to make the leg, they were going to do it by hand. But it meant following everything that he did. What did they learn? By following Dad's instructions, it was not so difficult. The end. All right, boys and girls, we know that Ruby always has something to say. Hello, everyone. Ruby here. It is important to follow directions in the science lab. Following directions keeps us safe and tells us what we are doing. It allows us to do some wonderful things in science. Simon Peter followed directions, and even found a new way to fish. Have you ever provided instructions for something? Did everyone follow your instructions? Did someone leave out a step? I like having people in my lab, but it's important for them to follow me. Here's your assignment. Has there been a time when you were asked to follow? How did you respond? Think about it and we'll discuss it. You can send me an email to Ms. Kathy's class at mail.com or shoot me a paper letter to Post Office Box 74514 Baton Rouge, Louisiana 
7-0-8-7-4. Talk to you later. But we're going to see if we can find these words. It's a word search for today's lesson. Okay, here are the, here's the word bank right here. And let's see. Oh, I see one already. I see boats. Do you see boats? It starts right here. And you yell out and tell me where you see something as well, okay? Oh, I think it's going to go better for me if I just draw a line through. Okay, let's just draw a line through it, okay? Okay, so we have boats. Did you see nets? N-E-T-S, nets. Oh... Let's see. I saw fishermen down here. It was very easy. Man, it's hard to draw on here and make a nice. So here is P E O P L E people. And, oh, I forgot to underline fishermen. We have fishermen. And. Look at this. J A M E S, one of the fishermen. And we have oh, W A T E R, water. And we have, what else? Okay, you're telling me where Nets is, but I don't see Nets. I just saw it, but I don't see it now. Okay, and there is Lake. We have that one. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pointing that. John is out there too. We can't leave him off without his brother being, his brother Simon has to be with him, right? It's, oh, that one doesn't finish Simon. But this one does S I M O N Simon. And let's see. They were by the sea. By the shore, S H O R E, shore. I'm beginning to think Nets is not even on there. No, it has to be there because I saw it earlier. There it is, N E T S, Nets, and that is the last one. All right, let's clear all drawings. And let's go to the next slide. We have two activities today. This one is called Make a Choice. We're going to circle the correct answer to each question related to today's lesson. See which ones you can answer from memory. And then if you need help, refer back to the scripture passage. Refer back to the scripture passage. Alrighty, let's see. Number one, what was the name of the lake that Jesus was standing by? Who remembers? Oh, you back there in that, oh, somebody in that corner. They remembered back there. Why are you standing way back there? And circle Genesis Red. Number two is the people crowded around Jesus. What were they listening to? Oh, it was so crowded that he had to get out on the boat to preach, remember? To preach, here's the clue. The word of God. They were listening to him teach them about the word of God. And number three is how many boats did Jesus see from the water's edge? That's right, there were two uh, two boats because one had to help the other. What were the fishermen doing who left their boats by the water's edge? 
when Jesus first walked upon them. Let's see. Yeah, they were washing their nets. And number five, whose boat did Jesus get into? Do you remember? Well, we know Jonah wasn't out there. He's from the Old Testament. Luke is the writer, and we said he had gotten into Simon's boat. Number six, what did Jesus do from the boat? Oh, okay, this time somebody from the front row answered he was teaching the people. What did he do? He taught the people. Number seven, what did Jesus tell the fishermen? They would fish for from now on. Okay, if you said lobster and sharks, come on now. You know it was people. Would you like to catch a shark or lobster? All right, we're not called to do that. We're called to fish for people because we're all, we are all, we're all disciples. All righty. Let's see. Let's go to the next one. Now we're going to review today's lesson. The scripture is Luke 5. The key verse is Luke, the fifth chapter, the 10th verse B. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Jesus was teaching on the Sea of Galilee, Lake Genesaret. James, John, and Peter were among the fishermen on the shore. And on the seashore, as Jesus finished teaching from the boat, because it was so crowded on land, people were just crowding around. It was easier to preach from the boat to the people sitting on the land. He asked Peter to let the boat drift away from the shore out into deeper water. And even Peter uh, said that he was going to follow that direction, even though he knew that they had caught no fish after fishing all night. Lord, if you say to do it, I'm going to do it. We should comply or obey or willingly the same as Peter did, right? Listen to your parents, listen to teachers. Okay, and after Jesus had them catch all of those fish, there were so many fish, Peter bowed down to him and really realized how important Jesus was. He must be the son of God. And he thought, I am so unworthy. I have so many sins. I cannot be in your presence, Lord. And all of us have committed sins. And Jesus still says to us, look, I still love you. And you can be a fisher of other people. Uh, you can follow what I do, what I say, and it will be all right. You'll still be able to catch other people, okay? The other fishermen were astonished they, and amazed at the miracles of Jesus catching the fish, and they all became disciples, 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, remember, you can send your drawings and letters to me. Um, the next slide I'm going to show you is an artwork by one of uh, the, someone that sent some artwork to me. And I want you to be feel free to do the same. You can send it to my email at class at mail.com or send it by the post office to post office box 74514 Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I'm going to stop and do a shout out to some good friends of mine. They are the grandkids of Sister Audrey Vaughn. They did a wonderful little greeting video for me. And I was just so, my heart just went, it was just so wonderful. Thanks for that shout out to me. I'm shouting out back to you guys. Love you all. And now, boys and girls, I've got to go.
And while I'm going, I'll be praying for you. I hope you pray for me because, you know, I love you. God loves you, too. And there's still, no, where's my fish? There's still nothing you can do about it. All right. Come back here, fish. Ah, there he is. He's going to need some little eyes. Draw his fins on. Draw his little scales. <laughs> This drawing is by Carrie of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's a picture of a brown cross on a green grassy hill, and the caption reads, May Christ be with you always. Thank you, Carrie.